It is clear with new defensive coordinator DeAnton Lynn that things are different and things are changing for USC in a much better way. Now, before we talk too much about DeAnton Lynn, let's see where he comes from. DeAnton Lynn comes from the NFL. Obviously, we know he comes from U- UCLA. He had a spectacular defense with them and Chip Kelly just a year ago in only 2023. However, before then, he was an assistant coach. He actually spent a year as a safeties coach in Baltimore, but he got his start in 2014 with the New York Jets. So he worked his way up for nearly a decade in the NFL trying to get himself up doing the best he possibly could. Finally got the defensive coordinator job at UCLA, got his foot in the door. I personally believe he probably is somebody that's going to want to go back to the NFL someday, but you never know. USC is a really good gig if you are rolling and doing well there, so he might be one that stays there for a while, but this guy definitely has a history in the NFL and is definitely going to be bringing an NFL style and NFL defense with him to USC. Now, Danton Lynn has his work cut out for him. In 2023, USC, their defense was not good. Number 113th in the FBS in points allowed per drive. Points allowed per drive. Uh, 113th, just not acceptable. Number 119th in the FBS in rushing yards allowed. Again, unacceptable just not able to tackle not able to stop the run at all well it's one thing if yes you're letting up a whole lot of rushing yards it's another thing if you can't get turnovers they were number 112 with only seven interceptions on the year the year before that they were third in the nation and interceptions. They had a ton the year before that in 2022, but obviously Alex Grinch and his guys, they really fell off and did not have nearly as good of a year in the back end with only seven interceptions in 2023. Now another kicker in the red zone, which obviously teams got to a lot against USC last year, number 119th in red zone scoring percentage. And sometimes that stat's a little misleading, right? Sometimes you're like, well, maybe they're just letting up field goals. Maybe they don't let them into the red zone all that often. No, they got into the red zone often. And when they did, uh, they were number 115th in red zone touchdown percentage. Over 90%, just below 91%. Just absolutely awful. It was clear that Alex Grinch had just lost control of this team. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know how to lead this team. He was trying to make things too complicated. But DeAnton Lynn has come in and he's established a more simple defense for this team. And everything you hear coming out of spring practice, every quote from every player, from every coach, you hear them talking about how he has simplified things. He's making it easier for the players because he knows he has gamers. He knows he has good players. He just has to be able to get them to work and know the scheme so that way they can make it happen. And some of these guys that he has with them, they are really, really impressive coaches. Matt Entz, he is a former head coach coming in and was just a spectacular coach. Doug Belk, a former defensive coordinator himself, is coming in. Eric Henderson, a former NFL defensive line coach. Not only are these guys that have experience doing bigger jobs than what they're doing here, but they also have experience doing jobs in different situations, right? You have one from the FCS who won a ton. You have one from the NFL. You have one who was a defensive coordinator himself. But this is the part about it I love the most. It's that DeAnton Lynn is making sure that even with all these high-powered coaches around him, he still wants it to be his defense. He wants it to be one voice. He wants everybody to follow his lead. Listen to what Lynn said here. He said, I got this from 24-7. Lynn said, a lot of guys have put the team before their ego, which is huge. You, You didn't see that a ton last year. Anyway, he keeps saying, everyone in that room has had success doing things their own way at their own schools or on their own NFL teams. So take the guys with 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 that level of experience, come into a room. We have come up with one way, one way we're going to work and do things. And it's not going to be everyone's way, but I think everyone's been doing a really good job as far as putting the team first. We're just trying to find the best way, regardless of who's idea it is. This is something I heard a lot about USC last year, that it wasn't no necessarily one cohesive team unit. It was kind of people trying to do their own thing, make their own way. And you kind of saw that a little bit with some of the star power they had. They had really good players, but they weren't always players that were playing within the scheme 
together. So this is a situation where Deanton Lynn, I think he's really focusing in on what he needs to focus in on in order to change things and make things better. Now, USC's players, they're they're likely to find a simplified scheme that's going to welcome relief and give them uh, a, a lack of complexity that Alex Grinch had. But USC's defense, honestly, with Lincoln Riley, they don't need to be any better than top 30 at most, right? Top 50 at the very least. But if USC can get a defense that's not ranking in the 110ths in all these different areas, like I referenced last season, if they can be a defense that's ranking in the top 50, in the top 30, in some of these metrics, you're going to find a team that's going to be able to contend in the Big Ten. Now, if Danton Lynn really improves, this is like a top 20, top 10 defense, you might see a team that could very well win the Big Ten Conference this year. I tend to believe in one off season, that's a really high bar to set, especially when you're not running a super complex defense. But D'Anton Lynn did a really good job in his very first year at UCLA with less talented guys. So it's a situation where it might happen. It might not. I still think I'm really high on this defense, and especially because this defense showed what we heard about them. They were kind of backing up what we heard about them in spring. In the spring game, I watched that USC spring game. There was not nearly as many. There were a couple, but not nearly as many busted coverages that we're used to seeing. This secondary is going to be the strength of this defense. If they're going to have a good season this year, it's going to be on the back of the secondary. Less busted coverages. Miller Moss was talking earlier in the season or earlier in the spring season about how the windows are just tighter and how he's he's trying to fit the ball in tighter windows than he has before. And so that's huge. You saw that. And another thing you saw, and this is huge in a spring game because you want to see good on good. Wide receivers had to make good catches against good coverage. This wasn't a situation where wide receivers were just running open. They ran their route and somebody got lost. They were able to actually make good plays and it showed for the USC wide receivers that they still have a prominent offense as well in this situation so it's really good news I liked what I saw out of the USC spring game I'm not recapping that whole thing but at least in the secondary I really liked what I saw now the D-line does need some help. This is going to be the key to the defense, in my opinion. Projected nose tackle starter Isaiah Rakes and the redshirt freshman uh, Diajon Lafette entered the transfer portal. So that is huge. You're losing two guys on the interior of the defensive line, one of them being the projected starter who's gone. Now, they did get Bear Alexander back. There was some drama with what was going on there, but they did get him back, which is huge. But we do need to look at some options for USC that I know for a fact they have reached out, at the very least reached out to each one of these guys. We know from a report earlier on today by On3 that Derek Harmon has gotten uh, ha has put USC in his top five. This seems like he had Miami in there as well, but he canceled a visit with them. This seems like with the top five of USC, Michigan State, Ohio State, Colorado, and Oregon, this seems like it's a bidding more. So we'll see what comes down to it with Derek Harmon, but this is a fantastic player. Now, he doesn't wow you with the tackles for loss, only three and a half, only one and a half sacks, and only one forced fumble, but he had 40 total tackles on the year 40 total tackles for an interior defensive lineman that's huge you love to see that you would love to see Derek Harmon in a situation that's better with better players around him and what he's able to do that's huge for him another guy Javier Suggs from Grand Valley State they just offered him earlier this week this is a huge huge offer for them they're going to be battling guys like Florida State for this one so this is not one done deal for them however 21 tackles seven and a half tackles for loss five sacks and a force fumble just absolutely wrecked down in the FCS level. Now, does that always translate to uh, big boy P4 college football? Not always, but you like the size. You like what you saw from him. And uh, from the tape that I watched, the games that I watched, he was getting push on those offensive linemen consistently, which is what you look for. Obviously, the offensive linemen down at the FCS level, not the same caliber that you're going to see in the P4. However, it is good to see, and it is good that they are not the only ones offering him. There are also teams out there like Florida State that are interested in his services as well. The final one, he just entered right at the end of the deadline. Demonic Williams, Demonic Williams, however you say his name. I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. Uh, he's from TCU, 33 tackles, five tackles for loss, 
three sacks, has been there for a while looking for a new scene where maybe he can make a bigger name for himself. I know for a fact USC has reached out to him. I'm not saying there's an offer or anything like that, but I know for a fact they have reached out to him and they are trying to have some kind of connection there so that way they are able to possibly get him to come in. Now, I think USC needs to get at least one of these three guys or one uh, defensive tackle in there that is doing really, really well uh, in the transfer portal. Do I think it will be one of these three guys? I think it will. I think at the end of the day, they have a very good chance with Derek Harmon. I think Javier Suggs is somebody that they also have a good chance with. We'll see what plays out here with Williams, but at the end of the day, I think if they can get at least one of these guys, that's going to be huge for them. Obviously, two would be ideal, but with Bear Alexander there, um, you, you, you don't see a scenario where you're possibly going to get two of these guys. You might get two defensive tackles in the transfer portal, but you're probably not going to get two of these guys. They're just too good, and Bear Alexander is too good as well. So at the end of the day, what Lynn needs to do is Lynn needs to channel his inner Jim Knowles, right? We saw what Jim Knowles was able to do with that Ohio State defense. Now, he does need to speed it up. Jim Knowles was able to make some things better in his first year, but there were still the busted coverages. There was still the issues in the secondary, and he cannot have those things. Deontay Lynn has to really shore those things up. The thing that I like that he's doing better is that he is he is simplifying the defense for them, which is huge. Now, does that lower their, their ceiling? Absolutely, but it also raises their floor. So you're not going to see USC having games like they get a, like they did against Notre Dame this year, where Caleb Williams just had tried to do everything himself, which is much much better for somebody like Miller Moss, who is obviously super talented. What he had five or six touchdown passes against Louisville in that in that bowl game. I mean, that was absolutely huge. You see the talent. You you trust Lincoln Riley with quarterbacks every single time. He's going to have this offense humming. He's going to make sure. He has it right but if Deontay Lynn like I said earlier if he can just get top 50 top 30 defense in the nation you're going to be looking at a USC team granted it's a really difficult schedule so 9 10 wins is going to be huge but if he can have it even better top 20 dare I say top 10 you're going to be seeing a USC team that is contending for the Big Ten they do have some really tough out of conference games so their record might not indicate uh, everything that they are. But at the end of the day, this is a really tough schedule and you're going to need a really tough team to do that. I think Deontay Lynn is the right guy for the job. I think he's going to be able to get it done. And I think you're going to see USC in the top four, at the very least in the top four of the Big Ten standings at the end of this season. Let me know what you think. Do you trust Deontay Lynn? Do you think Deontay Lynn is going to be able to make it happen where he's going to have a top 30, top 50 defense? What's your prediction? Top 10, top 20, top 30, top 50, outside the top 100. What do you think? I would love to hear your opinions. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.